This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Nearly one billion people face life in hunger, domestic abuse is on the rise, and there is a very serious outbreak of dengue fever. But first, more from our main story. The world is losing the battle on eliminating hunger, a UN report has revealed. The number of people affected by hunger globally rose to 828 million in 2021. The world is feeding less than ever before, and that includes 45 million children who suffer from the deadliest form of malnutrition. The number represents an increase of about 46 million since 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic plunged the world's economy into a downward spiral. And it is a staggering 150 million higher than 2019. The numbers tell a grim story. As many as 828 million people were affected by hunger in 2021. The numbers have remained relatively unchanged since 2015. The proportion of people affected by hunger jumped in 2020 and it continued to rise in 21 to 9.8% of the world's population. Around 2.3 billion people in the world, that is a remarkable 29% of the global population were moderately or severely food insecure in 2021. That's an increase of 350 million. And an estimated 45 million children under the age of five was suffering from wasting, the deadliest form of malnutrition, which increases the risk of death by up to 12 times. Another 149 million children under the age of five had stunted growth and development issues due to a chronic lack of food. While on the other side of the coin is the complete opposite. There are 39 million children who are overweight or obese. There is some good news. The Cambodian government has lifted the mandatory seven-day quarantine for travellers who have not been vaccinated. The unvaccinated travellers, though, will be required to take a test upon arrival. The Ministry of Health has announced Unvaccinated travellers who enter the country by air, land or water no longer need to undergo the seven-day quarantine, but they will be subjected to a mandatory rapid test upon arrival by health workers at all entry points. However, unlike in the past, Cambodia will now charge a $5 fee for the rapid test. Unvaccinated Cambodians are exempt from paying this fee. And unvaccinated travellers includes those who have only had a single shot of the COVID-19 vaccine. If a person's test results show positive, but their symptoms are mild, the traveller will be permitted to receive home treatment in accordance with the Ministry of Health standard procedures. But if the infected person does not have a proper place to receive care and or treatment, he or she will be placed in isolation, at a location designated by the government. And the cost and care of that treatment must be borne by the traveller themselves. Domestic violence is on the rise within the kingdom. Reports of savage beatings, shootings and even a recent beheading, where a man severed his wife's head and dumped it into a rubbish pit. Domestic violence, at all levels though, is something of grave concern. Violence is on the rise, according to a non-government organisation that works for the rights of women and children within the country. Cambodia and Human Rights Development Association, ad hoc, said that the incidents that end in murders are mostly motivated by jealousy or due to the influence of drugs. 
Ad hoc's director said, we have registered 55 serious cases of incidents this year. And she added to the Khmer Times that some were chronic cases that led to the loss of life. And she cited two horrible cases of domestic violence that happened only recently. A man shot his wife to death out of jealousy and another husband slashed his wife's face with a knife, mutilating the woman after a simple domestic argument. Reported physical cases of physical or sexual violence are on the increase. Even more shocking figures are 50% of children have experienced severe beatings and 25% of children have experienced emotional abuse. But even more shocking, is that one in 20 girls or boys have been sexually assaulted, which is a staggering number. That's 5% of children that are living in fear of a reoccurrence of sexual or physical violence. An awareness of this tragic figure must be of paramount importance. Continuing the theme of violence, it is not all hidden behind locked doors. Abuse by those in positions of authority is also of a very grave concern, and the message is going out. Do not mistreat school children. And the people it is going out to is the guardians of the children themselves, their teachers. Schools across the country have stepped up efforts to safeguard students from violence, including sexual and physical as well as mental abuse. And the abuse is coming from an unexpected quarter, the teachers themselves, the very people that parents trust to be the guardians of their offspring. There are teachers abusing students, especially in primary schools. And the Ministry of Education has instructed school management to abide by the rules on child protection. Primary Education Department Director has said, We have received reports of violence and it must be stopped. Teachers are banned from using physical violence on students such as hitting, kicking, punching or the grabbing of hair. The director added that making children stand under the sun or running around flagpoles is also not permitted. Save the Children Cambodia said that according to a previous study on child abuse, corporal punishment and other forms of abuse are frequently used by teachers and some children face significant levels of violence. So, if anyone disciplines your child in a way that you feel is unjust, remind them that their actions are unacceptable and against the rules. The rainy season is here, and within it lurks the ever-present threat of waterborne diseases. And this year, dengue fever has reared its ugly head. And medical officials are reporting a serious outbreak within the kingdom. So far, it's far beyond anything seen within recent years. The National Dengue Control Programme, the NDCP, reported near 2,500 cases of dengue fever nationwide in the first six months of this year. That is a considerable increase compared to just 757 cases during the same period last year. The NDCP said that the nation is on the verge of a dengue outbreak and there was almost a 400% increase compared to the previous year. They added that the delay in bringing the affected to hospital has claimed lives, and they noted it is imperative to receive treatment as soon as any symptoms are noted. They added, The fumigation process to destroy mosquitoes' breeding places is underway but dengue fever is spreading rapidly in overcrowded communities and efforts have been intensified to identify potential mosquito breeding spots nationwide. It is the poor that are the highest risks. Families living in cramped houses and garbage flotsam 
that stays on water bodies, making it an ideal place for mosquitoes to breed. So far, 15 tons of chemicals are sprayed to quell the swarms of mosquitoes, and some residents in high-risk areas have taken to keeping themselves and their children isolated indoors. The threat is real, and unfortunately, it is increasing. And now it's time to look at our sports news. Wimbledon has concluded and Djokovic continued his dominance with a fight back against Australia's Nick Kregos to win a fourth consecutive men's singles title. Djokovic, 35, lost his first set after some superb serving by his opponent, but ended up taking the grand prize at the centre court of Wimbledon. In the women's final, Elena Rabanakic became the first player from Kazakhstan to win a Grand Slam title by beating the third seed in an absolutely gripping final. The 23-year-old became the youngest women's singles champion since 2011. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. Someone once wrote, I don't know why there's no sun up in the sky, stormy weather. The man was a fool. The answer's actually in the lyrics, isn't it? We've got stormy weather, there will be no sun, and that's what we're going to get, no sun and plenty of stormy weather. Look at it. It is thunder and lightning right across the board, and it's not really helping the humidity. That is going up into the 90s, and the precipitation itself, well, mid to high 80s. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.